Can you make uh, Aaron a little like, um, introduction about yourself? Okay. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Veronica Guarino. I am a 32 year old filmmaker and artist, and I'm half Thai, half Italian. Je suis né à Paris le 25 août 1985 euh, d'une mère thaïlandaise qui est née à Bangkok et d'un père corse. My name is Abby Mark and I'm half Thai, half American. สวัสดีค่ะชื่อโอเดตเฮนรีแจ็คโคมินค่ะเป็นลูกครึ่งไทยฝรั่งเศสค่ะไม่บอกอายุ My name is Sarah and um, I'm 23 years old. Um, I'm half Thai and Swiss. ชื่อปุกกี้ค่ะชื่อสุกัญญาเสียจันอัดเป็นลูกครึ่งไทยเซาแอฟริกันค่ะ My name is Clay Hemrick. I'm half Thai, half Canadian. Uh, well, my Japanese name is Reka. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm Thai Japanese. I'm Claire. <laughs> I'm half Thai, half Irish. My name is Aaron Warner. I'm from London and uh, I was born and raised there. My mum's Thai. My dad is from the, the... No, he's not from there. He's born and raised in London as well, but his parents are from the Caribbean. I would always be a bit embarrassed about like, being half Asian and being Thai and stuff. So, so when people ask me like where I'm from, I'd always say like I'm Canadian. But then they'd be like, no, but like, you know, like the same old story, right? And then, uh, and, and then, so I, I started saying I was Thai, and everyone would be like, oh, that's cool. And then realizing that it was just only me that was like embarrassed by it. Like, Growing up, especially in a small town in Italy, I was one of only two half Asian kids. And people used to confuse us all the time. They used to think we were the same person. And it was kind of difficult for me because I felt like I didn't have anybody else around me that looked like me. My, I have a brother and a sister, but they're from my father's previous marriage, so they're full Italian. And in Italy, walking down the street, people would yell at me, uh, Chinesina, Chinesina, Chinesina. And then I would come to Thailand and my own family, my own cousin would call me Falang, Falang Kino. So it was an incredibly alienating experience as a child and I felt alone a lot. J'avais j'avais fait un complexe là-dessus sur mon identité asiatique, j'étais pas j'étais pas j'étais pas bien dans ma peau. Je me voyais moi comme un un français en fait. Il y a que quand je me regardais dans le miroir que que je comprenais, enfin que je me voyais comme un asiatique, sinon pour moi j'étais blanc. Je me voyais toujours comme blanc. J'avais que des amis blancs, mes copines d'école, mes petites amies étaient que blanches. Je, je, je me voyais pas du tout comme un asiatique. D'ailleurs, mon, mon, mon cousin Germain, qui est lui que asiatique, on, on lui avait interdit de, 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 de traîner avec moi parce que j'étais trop blanc pour. pour, 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 pour j'étais de mauvaise influence parce que j'étais trop blanc. Ok, Thailand est devenu plus globalisé. Nous sommes partie de cette communauté du monde maintenant. C'est plus westernisé maintenant. Mais il y a encore ce genre de stigma où vous dites Oh, je suis half Thai. Et puis les gens automatiquement pensent et relatent à la branding de Thailand où c'est comme Ok, Thailand est relatée à la prostitution, c'est relatée à la. You know, like soy cowboy and stuff. And when you say you're half Thai, they automatically think that okay, then your mom must have been a prostitute. Être thaïlandais, ça rime beaucoup avec prostitution. Donc ça veut dire que c'est pas une question qu'on demande si y a des Vietnamiens, moitié Vietnamiens, moitié là aussi un Thaïlandais surtout. C'est des voilà, c'est et, 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 et donc voilà, quand on devait s'installer en, en moment, il était question qu'on s'installe là-bas. Ma mère voulait qu'on s'installe spécifiquement dans un village. Elle s'était renseignée où, où il n'y avait que des gens qui nous ressemblaient entre guillemets. C'est un village où il y avait beaucoup d'enfants métis de couples mixtes pour pas qu'on ait ce, 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 ce regard-là sur nous parce qu'il n'y avait que des gens qui nous ressemblaient. Comme un ghetto quoi, comme un ghetto d'Eurasien. 
initially I didn't speak Thai and I was so young that I it didn't really it didn't really bother me because in Japan I was always a gaijin which means foreigner in Japanese and in Thailand I was always falang which is also foreigner you know so I just thought that you know that's who I was I was like six I didn't really know how to speak Thai or English I just was kind of like I kind of understood both but I didn't really speak yeah. and uh, I was always kind of like in the in the sort of outskirts of both, so it always felt like I was in a cloud or something like that. Like I've never been able to really identify myself as anything. Actually, it's been quite a like a difficult journey to like try and figure out like who I am, because I'm half Thai, half Swiss, but in the but I have an American accent. I have like the influence of American culture and language and movies and. You know all that, but at the same time, I've never lived in the states, and I've lived in Bangkok my whole life, so I understand like the culture of Thailand, and at the same time, my dad is Swiss, so it's like it's just a puzzle in my mind. It's just embarrassing to talk about like the existential worries about being a Lukum, you know, because they like they don't really seem like problems, but they're like the biggest problems in your life. That you should like, you know, like you feel like you should be complaining about it and stuff. So um, I remember this. Uh, there's this. There's this cartoonist. Uh, she, she 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 did this like small cartoon about about like a, a guy, a, a girl, and a guy chatting with each other at a bar. And then like it was like during a pickup. But then he he started talking about how like uh, he was a lukuk and how he doesn't really feel like he's part of like you know culture in the West, and he doesn't feel like it's part of a, a part of the culture in the East, and then and then at the end she's just like, damn, maybe you should kill yourself. <laughs> just like, oh man. <laughs> Do you resonate with that? Like, uh, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> it definitely resonated with me. Sometimes when you stay with Thai people, it's too hard for you to reach them, and when you be with foreigner people, maybe it's like too easy going. It's like it's like in the middle. Like if you go to the west, it's like not you, completely you. If you go to the east, it's not you either. Like you stuck in the middle, you never feel like full because like you are in the middle of like both world. I think like this is a problem with being like Lukuna. I used to consider myself very very much Italian, so walking down the street and being called out for being Chinese was kind of, it, it, it is a form of, of racism and I didn't understand it as so. For me it just felt like, why don't you want me? Like, why don't you accept me as being part of that? For me, like, a pale things, like, very bad, like the pale monkey, because, like, I'm the tallest one in the group and I got the red hair and Beside of the friends, teacher is bullying me too. My teacher is like, your hair is wrong. You have to dye it back. You cannot have the, the red hair like this. And I was like, okay, every year I have to take my mom and I take a photo of my grandma to see, to show them like, this is like my family. Everybody have the red hair. Long hi, long hi. Me, not understand. No one is in the school. No ไม่ มีใครเป็นลูกครึ่งเหมือนเราเราเป็นลูกครึ่งคนเดียวในคลาสแล้วเราก็พูดภาษาไทยด้วยพูดฝรั่งเศสด้วยตอนนั้นแล้วพอห
when I started doing art, I was just like, fuck, it's all like I have a tattoo in the French word, I have a French word all over my body because I'm really into it. And I shave my hair like a lot from like blue to like orange to like white. And the things like the white color is like my color now, so I, I like, I don't care about other people's things. Like one, one day you're just like, fuck you, like it's me. I feel really imprisoned to be honest because like, with my my mom, she's from Gopangan, or like Gosamui, like Gopangan Gosamui. Super, super traditional, old school fucking family. Like seriously, like so fucking old school. And um, like when I was younger, it was all like nice and happy and blah, blah, blah. But when I become became a teenager and started to become an adult and found my identity and learned what I enjoyed, like I love like ink, I love piercings, I. I'm gay, like, there's so many factors, you know? <laughs> um, but they pretty much disowned me because of what I am. J'étais dans le mal-être un peu de ça. J'avais le cul entre deux chaises quand j'étais en France, je savais pas trop. Je voulais être soit complètement asiatique, parce que je voulais revendiquer soit ce truc asiatique. Ce que je voyais en fait, si tu veux, en France, je voyais, comme j'ai vécu dans le quartier chinois, j'ai vu dans le quartier chinois des bandes d'asiatiques se former des asiatiques et en fait je voyais les blancs d'un côté les asiatiques de l'autre mais il n'y avait pas de, de bande de de loukoum de roisien quoi living in Montreal is weird because like you're you're like a, you're an anglophone so you're kind of like you're like an outsider so then I, I I kind of felt like I wanted to kind of like like belong somewhere so then that's why I tried Thailand et la décision à l'âge de 23 ans je crois de partir en, en Thaïlande parce que je pense avoir fait le tour et puis surtout que j'étais en recherche d'une identité, de mon identité asiatique, que je, je, ouais, que je pensais que je, ouais, je voulais me réconcilier avec mon identité asiatique. Back in the day, it would be Lukung would mean more like Thai and Caucasians, just like two different things like mixed together. So I'm Asian in Asia, so I have that two Asias. But Lukung, they did mainly I think the image just like maybe like blue eyes and um, Asian face or like you say like ten years ago or something. Like the media especially, they love like Lukung. Um, you would. You would always see like famous celebrities or models being like half something, and they would be like, "Oh my God, you're looking, looking a lot about. Oh my God, so it's like like it was just like this kind of like put in like a pedestal like that. En tant que looking, euh, ouais, ils ont. J'étais vu différemment, mais différemment mis sur un pied des salles, effectivement. J'ai pas été mis à l'écart, j'ai pas subi ni de ségrégation. Au contraire, j'étais j'étais privilégié honnêtement. Out of the blue, que you you que bah boom, oui. Hey, look her, nah, la la, nah, out of the blue, maybe Kai, maybe Kai Lu, maybe Kai Kotai, what am I meeting you, my die? That you, you got her, Mankaba, whoa, but phenomenon, learning, yeah. I was always sort of like the, the prize kid, like in the village that I'm from, like the look you know, like, oh, you're gonna be a big star, you're gonna be this, you're gonna be that, you know. Like, <clears throat> Um, I remember just people feeling me on the street all the time, like, you know, touching me, like random people, or like touching my face and stuff like that. They will like us more than we are, because we are not beautiful, we don't think that we are beautiful, but they think that we are beautiful because we are a child. 
ซึ่งจริงๆแล้วมันไม่จริงคือลูกครึ่งก็คือคนธรรมดานี่แหละแต่ด้วยสมัยนั้นลูกครึ่งไม่ค่อยมีพอเป็นลูกครึ่งเป็นดาราปุ๊บว้าสวยมากเลยแล้วเราเห็นเพื่อนเราทุกคนที่เป็นลูกครึ่งอะทุกคนสวยหมดเลยในสายตาคนไทยคนไทยพูดถึงลูกครึ่งมันอาจจะเป็นเพราะว่าอย่างสื่อในโทรทัศน์เลยลูกครึ่งก็จะเป็นลูกครึ่งทางตะวันตกมากกว่าลูกครึ่งที่แบบว่าเขาหน้าคมคมสวยๆอะไรเงี้ยเราก็จะมีความคิดว่าเราไม่ได้เป็นหนึ่งในลูกครึ่งเหล่านั้น I when I come back for summer holidays I would I'd be like at the mall and then there'd be like uh, there'd be like people like trying to chase me up the escalators like to give me their card because like they wanted me to be like a model or something you know like it was really crazy like it would happen like all the time too it wasn't just like it wasn't just like a one-time occurrence it would just be like it would be like a constant thing very very strange like there would be like the uh, the the Thai person that's like you know like kind of serious about modeling and stuff that you could tell and then there would be like you know like half Thai kids like me that just got picked up off the street and like not even really knowing understanding where they are really just like sitting there like oh you're here too because like somebody like found you on the street <laughs> เราเป็นลูกครึ่งเราก็จะมีผิวไม่เหมือนเขาใช่ไหม different fair we have fair skin แล้วก็จะผิวไม่เหมือนเขาสีผมไม่เหมือนเขาความสูงไม่เหมือนเขาเราก็เลยจะได้มีโอกาสด้วยตรงนี้ด้วยเพราะว่าเขาพอเรารู้แล้วเขารู้ว่าเราเป็นลูกครึ่งปุ๊บเนี่ยเขาก็จะรู้แล้วว่าเอ้ยเราต้องไม่เหมือนคนทั่วไปเราก็เลยได้เริ่มได้ทํางานด้วยกันเป็นนางแบบด้วยการทายแบบด้วยกันเป็นนักร้องด้วยกันอะไรเอาเด็ดคิดว่าจริงๆแล้วที่เด็ดได้มาเป็นเด็ดทุกวันนี้ The opportunity was presented to me, but because I saw, I saw how much they want to change the beauty of a woman rather than accepting them for exactly who they are. And for me, it's, I always have darker skin, so it's that's not a part of what the show business really wants. They like lighter skin and other products or skin whitening, this and that. So, and I'm either too muscular or it's it, it just. Not, not my thing, and now I have tattoos, and it's even more of a no-no. So I'm like, it's okay, guys. I don't want to be in front of a camera, <laughs> except for today. <laughs> That's probably why they don't like the self that much, I guess, because when it comes to beauty standards, I've I've heard people say the most beautiful women are from up north, where it's like up north, a lot of Chinese people, obviously, from immigration and stuff. So they're basically just saying. You know, white skin is more beautiful. Quite simply. Like I like the sun a lot, and in Japan, like they don't really care that much. Like if if you're a healthy child, you go out and play in the sun, so you get tan. That's that's healthy. That's good. But here, back in the day, they, um, especially the the whole media thing, like they would, they like the whole, you know. ผิวขาวสวยเนียนหมวยเซ็กซี่ whatever like you have to be fair and white um, the like tan kids are like oh มาจากบ้านนอกแบบน่าเกลียดแบบ ew you know like farmer kids whatever adverts they're everywhere like oh uh, new it's like new uh, skin cream it's moisturizes With skin whitening, and it's like, why is that the necessary part? <laughs> Just fucking, and then the suntan lotion, not suntan lotion, sunscreen with skin whitening. So not only are you protected by this from the sun, you also get whiter at the same time. It's incredible. And then, <laughs> like uh, face wash with whitening, Just the face. Well, like. Not even the rest of the body. <laughs> A lot of discrimination. Those are the main obstacles. Like, for example, I said earlier, like my sister, she wants to be an English teacher, and you know, imagine like a female version of me. That's basically what she looks like. And she, uh, she did the interview well. They were very pleasant with each other, and they liked her and stuff. But they said uh, quite explicitly, which I guess is saved time. So I guess that's appreciated. But the person interviewing explicitly said, "Oh, we would prefer someone with 
white face is how she said it. I was like, okay, so it happens. It's pretty obvious what the problem was. Like, I kind of appreciate that we know exactly what the problem is and there's no like people trying to hide like, oh, it wasn't racism or how you look. It's like, no, this is straight up. It's because we don't look white. แรกๆก็มีคนแบบว่าเลยสึกบ้างอะไรอย่างเงี้ยแต่ว่ามีเพื่อนที่เป็นคนไทยเค้าก็พยายามบอกว่าก็ไม่เห็นเป็นไรเ